Hi everyone, we are Jason and Chrissy. Hello. Hi, we are Twin Flames and Harmonious Twin Flame Union. And today we want to talk about some experiences that we've had and how uh, in, like utilizing the teachings of union, specifically the mirror exercise, how that supported us in moving through things as we realized we were autistic and started to explore it. And so there's a lot of really good that comes from self-discovery, from self-realization, from understanding yourself at a deeper level. And when we were invited to look at this, when we were invited to explore being autistic, we found great relief at first, like an incredible amount of relief. Like we just figured out the big elephant in the room of our life and how everything felt or seemed like it was out of place, but it, but it actually wasn't. In addition, like something funny that we came across that I thought, are you okay? That <laughs> <laughs> I thought was funny was that I felt because I put on masks, I thought everyone put on masks. And um, I felt like everyone didn't want to be social. Like no one actually wanted to go to the events. Everyone just went to them um, and just acted like they wanted to be there because that's what I was doing. And so I thought that's what everyone did. In fact, there, that's not true. There are actually people who generally enjoy social interaction. And uh, I thought it was just a big ruse. <laughs> so um, something that's coming up for me is to, that I wanna share today is in regards to just emotional processing and energy, energy management. And what happens for me and what I experience when I get overstimulated or I have feel overwhelmed in emotion. And what's happened to me since I was a kid is that I will have, well, they'll start with like a temper tantrum. Uh, I remember as a child, if I didn't feel something was right, or I felt like there was an uh, unfairness going on, I would throw a tantrum and I threw tantrums. I still throw tantrums, right, Jay? Do I still, from time to time, I, I throw tantrums. And um, that's just part of, from my understanding of being autistic and it's something that over time I've done my best to like feel through and I've found in the last couple of years of implementing the mirror exercise and really truly exploring my feelings that those temper tantrums have drastically decreased and my energy management has really uh, increased and my ability to sense when I need deeper self-care, sense when I need something and give it to myself versus trying to push through and causing burnout. Well, I think like, can you identify like what, why you tantrum, like in 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 terms of like the <clears throat> the emotions being kind of like overloaded and it and it kind of causes like a a tantrum. Yeah, you, you can't like uh, process it in the same way, or it's it's harder to process. Than yeah, that. it's really difficult for me to communicate why I'm so upset. And I do my best to communicate why I'm upset, but what I found is that it doesn't uh, actually come across properly. And um, I'm usually told I'm complaining or, uh, you know, when I was a child, it would just be like, suck it up and do it. We're telling you to, even though I felt it was like very unjust and unfair. Um, and I didn't feel like uh, seen or my feelings that they didn't matter. And so that would cause me to go into a, like a turtle shell or cause me to shut down and just like spend a lot of time isolating myself uh, in order to properly uh, process my emotions in my own, in my own way. That's my, there's my, uh, that's our puppy Lucy in the background. She's actually being trained to be my emotional support animal. So she's coming into the frame here. Uh, but now as an adult, I would say that I tantrum usually when I've overloaded myself or I've failed to process my feelings in on a regular basis and I have like suppressed them and they all come to the surface at the same time. And there'll be a triggering event which results in me basically going through a process of shutting down of like at times like I'll just fall to the floor and you know very dramatically uh, move through my feelings. And you, you, we've experienced this, of course. And so, um, yeah, like I get very scared and I get very like, um, 
I don't feel like there's anywhere for me to go. And at these times I, I tend to, my process is to surrender to God and just, you know, like I'll say God's will be done. And I just trust God and sit there and move through it uh, and surrender everything I feel and everything that's coming up to God. And, you know, that just ride it out until it's over. And so that's something that um, I do when I tantrum. What, what do you experience when I tantrum? I would think for you, something that you do to help me, to calm me down is like, you'll hold me. And that really helps me move through it faster. You also, I think, I don't think like you take it personally. You just realize I'm going through a hard time. I don't know. That's what I experienced from you. <laughs> like if I, cause some, a lot of times I'm not like upset with Jason and I'm just upset about something. Sometimes I am upset at Jason and, and that's, what's triggering me. But like, a, and even then a lot of times I'm just like overloaded with feelings and uh, physical touch is something that comforts me and supports me in moving through that. So Jason will just hug me or hold me as I'm like moving through it. And it helps me move through the meltdown faster. I would say like, um, you get very like um, like closed off and it, it, you're very like there you can tell that the whatever emotions are, that you're um, experiencing are very intense mm -hmm. and you get like kind of closed off in the sense that like you're uh, you're unsure you know kind of what to do until yeah. they start to until the emotions start to wane Mm -hmm. And then you can um, make more, you know, uh, like logical, like your, your logical decision making comes back into play. Yeah. Right. So like, um, I guess there's like a, there's like a whole uh, experience, there. experience, right? Where yeah, it's like a like, journey. It's like really <laughs> intense. And yep. like, there's no talking to you. <laughs> or there's there's talking to you but it's not like it's not going anywhere it's not going anywhere yeah and then like it has to like kind of run its course or play yeah. out and then it, and then you know it'll come back to <clears throat> a place where um, you can you can look at it and and handle it right and logically look at it and, and address whatever sure. the upset but until, is but, it, but it, until that the the degree of um intense feelings starts to kind of like peter off you're mm -hmm. you're you're like in this like um unmovable place yeah i would yeah it's kind of that's what it's like yeah and at the in these Same times yeah i think in these times like i tend to need like comforted so i'll I'll like, you know, sit on the couch and feel like, you know, with a bunch of pillows around me and just like feel very um, safe. It's a safe place for me, like very comforted. Uh, if I'm out and about, it's usually my car that I'll go to and I feel very safe in my car to express and feel my feelings. If I'm in public, sometimes I would use a bathroom in public scenarios because you don't really, you have no- Sorry, could you say that again? Hmm. Sure. <laughs> Sure, sure, Siri. <laughs> so like, or Alexa, is it Alexa? Siri. It's Siri. So like, um, I would, you can't really control when it occurs. It's not like you're gonna know when you're gonna hit meltdown or a tantrum, right? Like, and so I would find space in bathrooms or I would of course go to my car or I would, if I had in the office, I shut my door, just take some time it's for usually myself. like a cause and effect, right? It's not Correct. just like, yeah. oh, you're walking along and- No, usually there's like a trigger a or something. There's like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's like an actual- Yeah, reason. there's an event, yeah. right? And so like, that's how I have handle, handled it over the years. Um, sometimes more graciously than others, I do my best. And so I think that the key here for me as I continue to move forward is a lot of self-care. What about like sensory? Like, uh, I have sensory or... needs. Yep, I'm very, I'm very, very high, highly sensitive. So um, like being out in the sun is very, um, I can't be out in the sun for a very long time. It feels very, very hot and uncomfortable to me. Um, I 
I enjoy, uh, again, physical touch, like massages, uh, things like that. I enjoy very comfortable clothes. I don't, I don't like to wear makeup. I've tried for a really long time to get into makeup. It's just not my thing. Um, I don't enjoy it. I do enjoy lotions, like very, very like high quality lotions. Um, I find that I put those on a lot with just, it makes me feel good. Um, and then sensory needs, like going to the grocery store or going to shopping to different places are very difficult for me. And that will trigger uh, an emotional response, a heightened response. Sometimes if we go out, like a lot of times I, can, I can't stay at things for very long times and I want to go and I want to enjoy the events or the thing, but like it really does drain me and it requires a lot of recovery time after. And so if I don't give myself that recovery time, I'm setting myself up for a meltdown. Okay. So like, does that happen like every time that you're maybe hmm. out in public, like is is there, uh, do you always experience like a sensory overload or anything like that when you're in public or uh, is it just some of the time? Oh, that's or? a good question. It's not all the time. No, I, I wouldn't say it's all the time. I think it's, um, it's sometimes and I, I, I genuinely don't know when like it's going to happen mm -hmm. um, or when I get sensory. I can just be honest with you and say like, hey, I'm ready to leave or I need space, yeah, right? Sure. Like uh, I just, I follow my heart do what I desire to do but I'm also okay if I need to leave early sure I like yeah. what's coming to mind is that one time we went to the mall to get some stuff and look at furniture and stuff like that and then like um we we weren't there very long I don't think but like no. we both uh were just like done done like it was like <laughs> we could walk around a little more and check some stuff out but it it was just like one of those things where it was like yo we gotta go we got it's time to go we yeah gotta, when it's time to go. go it's time to go and i think i've been like that since a child like when i'm ready to leave i'm i'm literally when ready you, to you go feel, you like just feel like kind of zapped is it totally zapped yeah. and there's a lot of sleeping mm -hmm. that's just like part of it mm -hmm. and so like uh pre prior to learning of autism like I know I would just push through something like that yeah. mm -hmm. because like uh, no one else feels. Yeah, trying no to be polite, like I'm don't want to be rude. Uh, like, seems right. to be experiencing that. So mm -hmm. it must be just something that like, you know, uh, just a freak thing that I'm experiencing, but it's really yeah. not. Right, it's like not. I think that a lot of times people don't understand, like I'll always be like the last one to show up and the first one to leave an event and I've gone through a lot of events and there's there was a point where like I just stopped going to events unless ordered you know to be there if I had an option to go or not go I would I would not go to the event even if I planned the whole thing uh and so I think that's something to indicate I want everyone else to have a good time and I love planning things I just don't actually want to be there and I just honor that about myself now Good. Does that answer your questions? Yeah. Do you feel complete here? Well, I, like, is there anything else or is there anything in particular you've noticed that like trigger that kind of like a, um, mm -hmm. a sensory overload response in you? Or is it just like a, a you haven't been able to pinpoint? I think, you I think you nailed it. I think that I feel it within myself. I feel the tiredness. I feel the uncomfortableness within myself it's learning over the years to say something or to change the environment. And so what I've learned is that uh, the exhaustion or the burnout, like the indicators or flags within myself that my body is communicating to me. And it's, it's through listening to those that I can reduce burnout or reduce the length of it. And it's not, so it's not necessarily like an external stim stimuli, mm -hmm. right? It's more of an inner feeling and compass that I've, I've cultivated over years of exploring this and figuring it out. And I know when I've overextended myself, like I, I know when I'm done. And uh, I think that it's just getting clear on what you wanna do with your energy. And if like the, the debits and credits associated with uh, your energy management and, and what that means. And so, yeah, I think I've pushed myself a lot over the years, like way too much. 
And so it's really learning a better balance in life. And as I learn that balance, I have a much more fulfilling and beautiful life because I'm honoring my energy properly. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time. See you. Bye.